Proverbs. Hopefully you've, you've been with us on Sundays, just loving that exploration of the book of Proverbs, growing in wisdom. But this is a verse that has been on my, has been on my heart for, I would say, I don't know, maybe, maybe four weeks um, in a really unique way. And sometimes you don't know why that is, but I felt from the moment that it happened that it was something that God wanted to show up in a prayer meeting. And so, um, lo and behold, we're in a prayer meeting. So there we go. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. The writer of Proverbs says, The name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The name of the Lord is a fortified tower tower, the righteous run into it and are safe. Now, there, some of you aren't, aren't going to know this, so this is totally okay. Some of you are going to be all over this, though, so you just need to be not ashamed, okay? Can, are you not ashamed? Is there anybody who's not ashamed in here? So it's like, there's a, good, there's a good crew who's not ashamed. I appreciate that. There was a song written in 1989 and uh, it was called, The Name of the Lord is a Strong Tower. And when I was growing up in church, we used to sing that. That was a Sunday night song. Back when we did Sunday night church, like, is it like, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And they are saved. And they went, blessed be the name of the Lord. Does anybody remember? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Some of you are like, I'm glad I missed that. I'm really, you know, I'm happy we don't sing that one. But we sang it a lot. But, you know, so what happens to me, this, is, this may not happen to you, so that's totally fine. What happens to me is sometimes you can know a verse and not know a verse. You can sing about something, and for whatever reason, you categorize it, it gets, it, I don't know, encapsulated in a song, and, and that is good. I mean, it's obviously, it's in there, as you can tell. Um, it came out so beautifully. Uh, but there is, there's something about allowing yourself just to be saturated in God's Word. And, and I'm not saying the song didn't serve that purpose in some way. I think it was, it teaches truth. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. But about nine years ago, Becky and I were, um, pre-children, went on a, went on a, a trip to France. And we started in the south of France. We flew into Nice. And then we drove up into the foothills above Nice. And we stayed in this this, I don't know, probably 3,000-year-old town, um, and you're walking the cobblestone streets, and there are inscriptions in the center of this city that were put there by Roman conquerors. Like, Roman soldiers marched through that town. So there are inscriptions from Caesar in the walls. And, you know, the, it, it's an amazing thing. And you're looking at the, the structure at the center of the city, and that structure has been there for a couple thousand years. And then those, you know, they've got now homes, modern-day homes. They've retrofitted the walls and some of the other structures for people to live in today. But then you drive up into the Alps, and you see castles in the mountainside. And then you drive into Paris, and you see things throughout Paris, this, this old architecture, but you, it starts to put meat on the bones of what you read in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. It's a fortified tower. You know, a couple of interesting things about this. The writer of Proverbs says that a tower, you start to think about it, represents what? Security. Safety. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. So if there's an attack what you wanted to do was to get behind the wall. And then if that army pressed through the wall that was supposed to be unscalable, and they, they overran the wall, the place where you went to take safe haven and to get away from that attacking army is they opened up the tower and everybody went up into the tower for safety and security to avoid the attack of the enemy. Now, Solomon, when he's writing this, you need to notice something. He, he doesn't say the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous person 
goes to it. He doesn't say, he doesn't say that we're going to the tower. So it's, this is not a situation where it's like, hey, you know, I was thinking tomorrow, maybe about 2 p.m., you can meet me over at the tower. Just thought we might have a picnic at the tower. You don't skip to the tower. You don't saunter to the tower. You don't, you don't do a fast walk. Some of you are fast walkers. You don't fast walk to the tower. What do you do to the tower? You run to the tower. Why do you run to the tower? Because you're under attack. Get to the tower. So when it, in, this, in this first century, well, Proverbs is not first century. You're going back further than that. You're going into BC. You're, you're, when you're, you're looking at this verse, you're talking about a culture in which there is a centrally located town. And in that town, if that town had been developed, there's a wall around that town or that city, that, that place, that, civilization, that part of civilization there. And then you've got farmers, or it's an agrarian society, and so you've got people keeping livestock in, in about a 20-mile radius around that town. And now if there are some sort of roaming band or army that is approaching the town, what everybody's going to do in that 20-mile radius is as soon as they see the approaching army, they're going to bail for the wall. They are going to the wall. So they are running to the wall to avoid the enemy. And then if the wall gets overran, as we said, they're going up into the tower because they're looking for safe haven. So implicit in the verse is that you go to the tower because you're under attack. You go to the, atta- you go to the tower because your safety's in jeopardy. You go to the tower because your life is in jeopardy. That's why you go to the tower. So Solomon says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. But part of getting a hold of what Solomon writes here is not only understanding that you go to the tower when you're under attack, but also that understanding what Solomon's pointing to in running to the tower. In other words, everybody runs to a tower when they're under attack. Everybody does. That's what he gets to in verse 11. And to understand verse 10, you really have to go to verse 11 because verse 11 is a companion verse in the Proverbs. And verse 11 says, the wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine it a wall too high to scale. Now, what does that tell you about verse 10? It it tells you this, that everybody has somewhere they think is safe. Everybody does. Even if people don't know Jesus, even if people don't, if you don't have a walk with God, there's somewhere you think is safe. There is a tower. There's some place you go when your back is against the wall. There's some place you go when things are, when, when things get a little bit shaky. And Solomon's not picking on the rich here. He's just using that as low-hanging fruit. That's his example. It's like, think about a rich person. Potentially, they look at their wealth. They could easily look at their wealth as a safe harbor. They could, that could be their tower so that when things get a little dicey or when they're feeling unsettled, they reflect on, they think about, they run to in their thoughts and they run to for safe haven their resource or their wealth. Everybody has somewhere they think is safe. Everyone has a fortified tower. The problem comes here. The problem comes when you run to the strength of something that is really, and its strength is really a figment of your imagination. The problem is when you run to a tower and the strength of that tower is an illusion. Solomon says this is, the, this is his concern, that everybody has a tower. The wise person understands, the godly person understands Everyone has something that they run to. And the tr- truth be told, even Christians can have other towers. Even Christians can have other things that they believe deep down at the core inside of them that if, as long as I have this, it's okay. As long as that's intact, I'm good. And that really is functionally their tower. The, ru- the wealthy run to 
wealth. You know, people, there are some who would run to a relationship. There are some who run to a romantic relationship, but everybody runs to something. But verse 10, when you go back to it, Solomon says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Run to it. Run to it. The name of the Lord is our strong tower. Run to it. So what does it mean to run to the name of the Lord? Because this is the only time in the entire Bible that we are told to run to the name of the Lord. It doesn't show up anywhere else like that. Now, the name of the Lord or that concept shows up in a lot of places. But what does it mean for you and I to run to the name of the Lord? to make sure that he is our strong tower. I'm gonna give you three things and then we're gonna gonna, gonna come into the altar. But the first is this, to let go of imaginary safety nets that will not catch you. Jesus, he meets this guy in the gospels, we know him as the rich young ruler. And he comes to Jesus and he says, good teacher, what what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, well, you know, he kind of of quizzes him about his spiritual health and kind of his, his upbringing. And this guy's like, check, 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 check. Got all that. Moral person, religious person. He checks all the boxes. And Jesus says, there's only one thing that you lack. Here's what I want you to do. You need to go and sell all of your possessions and then follow me. And it says, and and the, the text says something really interesting. It says, Jesus looked at him and loved him. He loved him. And the Bible tells us the man went away sad because he had great wealth. Why would Jesus tell him to sell everything? Is the moral of the story, hey, if you've got a lot, if you've got a lot of money, you need, to get rid, you need to liquidate your assets and follow Jesus. No, that's actually not the moral of the story. It might be when you dig down into Jesus' application for a particular person's life, that was Jesus' application for this guy. But really what Jesus is saying to him is that your tower is an illusion. You've got an imaginary tower of wealth. And if you don't get rid of that safety net, it will strangle you spiritually. And there are some in here and you've got, you've got a tower. There's, some, there's, there's a tower in your life and it's, it, I don't know what it is. I don't know, only God knows that. And it could be that God is in the process of kind of weeding out your dependence on that tower and on that safety net. But what he wants you to know tonight is that you can't trust it. You can't, it, it, he's not doing it to take something from you. He's doing it to give you an unshakable foundation. That's what he was doing for that guy. He was saying, you think you're so secure. But I love you enough to tell you when your back is against the wall and when it really counts, it will let you down. It's an illusion. Put your trust where it belongs. In the name of the Lord, he's a strong tower. Number two, make God the only place you run. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run. That's a fast walk. You just have to pretend I was running. They run to him. Here's the problem. We run to a lot of things and we run to God. The writer of Proverbs is saying, there's only one thing you run to. And you can walk to all the other things. But some of you are like, praise God, I hate running. That is so awesome. You only have to run to one thing. That's good news. You're like, that's worth coming to the prayer meeting tonight. Um, you only have to run to one thing. 
So that's not, that's not, don't, that's not him saying, don't go seek wise counsel. We know that the writer of Proverbs says seek wise counsel. That's not get invested in wise, you know, relationships. That's not, there's all sorts of wise things that could supplement what you do first and primarily, which is running to God. But what happens is too many of us are running to all those other things first or in concert with running to God when what the writer of Proverbs is saying and what God's word, his, the whole counsel of God would appeal to us is stop running to all of those other things and first run to him and then let him direct you where to walk. Skip or hop after that. But only run to him. Only run to him. Only run to him. There are some of you and you're in a situation where you feel like, I need a strong tower. I need, I, I need a strong tower. I need a strong tower in my marriage. I need a strong tower in my finding. I need a strong tower in my health. I need a strong tower. I need that place of safety. I need that place of security. And my question to you, this is not, this is not, trying to convict you so much it is just to you do a self-assessment and say, have you said, I will only run to him? I'm, I'm going, and have you done it? First and foremost and continually, I'm going to run to him because he is my strong. He's the, all the other things are an illusion. He's the only strong tower. Then, finally, and then we're going to move into the altar. If you fill your heart and mind with the truth about who God is, he becomes more and more and more your strong tower. Because think about this. The name of the Lord in the Bible, it means a lot, it means a lot of things. In this verse, it functions as a metaphor. But your name in the Bible wasn't just a label. It's not just John Smith or, you know, I just, yeah, my name is this, my name is that. No, it is indicative of who you are, your identity. And so when you watch throughout the Bible, when God gets a hold of Abram's life and tells him who he's going to be, what does he do? He changes his name to Abraham because he's going to be the father of many nations. When Jesus really gets a hold of Simon's life, he changes his name to Peter because he's gonna be a building block of the early church. There's this guy named Saul and he's going around and he's killing Christians, he's persecuting Christians, he's throwing them in jail. When Jesus reveals himself to him and opens his eyes, he becomes Paul. It's a new day. That names, those names tell us who they are, and it's the same with God. The name of the Lord is, that's his identity, that's his character, that's his nature. In other words, what the writer of Proverbs is saying, what does it look like to run to the name of the Lord? It looks like saturating yourself in the character and the nature of God so that you dive deep into the well of his mercy and you dive deep into the well of his grace and you lead hard on his loving kindness and his faithfulness and his holiness. You lean hard on those things because you recognize he is who he says he is and he does what he says he will do, period. And that becomes a strong tower. There's no storm that can demolish that. When he's really your foundation, when he's really your strong tower, when you have forcefully said, that's where I will go, then it doesn't matter what army's invading. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how fierce the attack is because you've got the real thing. You've got the strong tower. So tonight... Here's what we're gonna do. Let's put into practice what he told us to do. If there's an attack going on in your life, that's where we need to start. If there's an attack, if there's something, 
And it doesn't matter what it is. If there is an attack, if you say, well, no, I really think there's a spiritual attack. Well, absolutely, there probably is. If you're saying, you know what, the attack for me is really, it is a battle in my health. The attack for me is my family's under attack. My kids are under attack. My marriage is under attack. My emotional health is under attack. I don't know who the enemy is or where the enemy is coming from specifically in your life. I do know we have an enemy though. And I do know he prowls like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. He's always on the attack. But for some, you're feeling the weight of that attack tonight. And here is the best, the primary, the first, and the only place you should run. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved.